Welcome, folks, to today's episode of Battletech Simplified. I'm Michael Schachman, I'll be your host and commentator. And in today's episode, we will be covering the House of the Inner Sphere, the nation of the Inner Sphere, that is beloved by many, especially the edgelords of the Inner Sphere, but also reviled by all those they cross. Today, we'll be covering the Draconis Combine. The roots of the Draconis Combine lie within the Alliance of Galadon between the worlds of Galadon V and New Samarkand. Under the leadership of Shiro Karita, the Alliance uh, re rechristened the Draconis Combine in 2319, used threats, uh, intimidation, deceit, and outright military conquest to expand. Shiro established House Karita as the ruling dynasty of the Combine, whose reign was interrupted only by the rule of the Von Rohrs family from, to, um, from 2421 until they were wiped out in 2510. The first coordinator was responsible for integrating many neighboring realms into the Combine, with two exceptions, those being an assault on the Principality of Rosselhog in 2330, um, which was largely successful, though uh, the interrogation of the Russell Hoggians uh, into Dracon or the reintegration of Russell Hoggians into Draconis Draconian culture was heavily uh, resisted and it remained a vassal state for some time. Uh, the uh, Combine was att um, also attempted to conquer the Azami uh, Asami worlds in 2497 with limited success. The Combine was the last Intersphere nation to join the Star League. Following the League's collapse, Coordinator Minoru Kurita was the first Council Lord uh, just to declare himself First Lord, leading to the First Succession War. The Succession Wars were unkind to uh, humanity and created a, ba a backslide in technology. The unofficial end of the Third Succession War is considered uh, to be 3025. Following the Fourth Succession War and facing the prospect of, of a superstate, the Federated Commonwealth, on its borders, the, com the Combine recognized the independence of the Free Russellhog Republic to create a buffer state and secure higher technology weapons through Comstar. These proved useful when the Commonwealth did invade in the War of 3039. The clan invasion, however, resulted in a huge loss of territory for the Combine, as even the capital of Luthien uh, saw one of the largest battles of the war. Though many worlds uh, were, were regained in occupation, or in Operation Do Bulldog, Coordinator Theodore Carita was also responsible for relaxing some of the rigid traditionalism within the military allowing more women into higher ranks and lessening the impact of Bushido on his troops so that they would be more willing to accept flexible tactics that would be useful against the clans. The reactionary Kokuriu Koku, Koku, Koku Kai or Black Dragon Society uh, Opposed his reforms and launched a full-scale rebellion at the same time as the world as the word of Blake started their jihad The combine emerged from the from the jihad weekend though still powerful compared to their neighbors After the blackout of in 3132 the combine launched an invasion of the Republic of the Sphere a series of um, that that being a series of assassinations placed um, or, however, a series of assassinations placed Yori Kurita, the illegitimate descendant of Theodore, on the throne. Yori, who was commonly seen as the puppet of Warlord and uh, Gunjino Konrai, uh, Mats Matsuhan Toranaga, uh, I don't think I'm saying that right, Matsuhari Toranaga, uh, presided over the Combine's 
military campaigns against the Republic of the Spear, as well as renewed hostilities against the Federated Sons. This latter campaign initially went very well for the camp for the Combine, uh, with DCMS forces reaching as far as the sun's capital of the new of new avalon as the dark age continued the combine's progress began to slow and its borders stabilized around its new conquests including the swath of conquered territory formerly belonging to the federated sons that became known as the dragon's tongue uh <laughs> as for um uh my uh, as for the the mech of significance because of their their high level of of um aggressiveness of aggression towards their neighbors uh one thing that curita or the house curita slash the draconis combine was well known for was the horde tactic uh was a a, a thing of being able to send powerful yet numerous uh, light mechs uh, in to be able to clear out uh, things. And one of those mechs, as you'll see on the screen now, is the Panther. Um, the Panther honestly is one of the uh, one of the most beloved and reviled mechs anywhere that I've been able to find because it's one of the few uh, light mechs that can carry a PPC in addition to some other weapons as well. So that's kind of cool. In addition to the fact that it was so feared and so hated that there, that it and one of its other uh, c uh, contemporaries in the, in the Combine had a whole mech series that were created, that was created just to be able to deal with them. Keep that in mind. As for my personal feelings on the uh, Draconis Combine folks, I would have to definitely say that uh, it is, um, it's not one that I've played very often, though I can definitely see the merits in it. Uh, I have a soft spot for, for, uh, for fiction and lore around, uh, that focuses around, uh, themes of feudalistic Japan, uh, and early Meiji era Japan, uh, obviously those uh, key one being, uh, Samurai X and Baroni Kenshin. Uh, and the idea of seeing that whole story take place in space, like be reenacted in space, is kind of cool. So that's that's just kind of where my mind goes. Anyway, folks, thank you so much for joining me in today's episode. Hope you enjoyed. Leave a comment down below telling me what you think about the about the Tracronis Combine. Do you think that they're badass samurai of space, or do you think they're a bunch of uh, blowhearted windbags of uh, of old schoolness? Tell me down below. Anyway, guys, um, thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't already, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Also, be sure to ring the bell icon so you never miss out when our live videos go live on YouTube. Last but not least, check out the links down in the description. You know what they do, you know where they go, you know what to do. I'm Michael Shockman, folks. I've been your host and commentator. Stay tuned for next week when we move on to the next house. And yeah, until then, remember as always, no guts, no galaxy. Later, everybody.